Design system builders have different workflows than those who use them. However, both groups want design systems and components that are easy to understand and use. Let's say we have a button component in our design system. How would we know what parts of the button we're allowed to change? Do our buttons always have to have text? Can we swap the icon for something different? Design systems often come with documentation that answers these questions. But what if we could build these guidelines directly into the component in Figma? We could use variants to define these limits, but as our design system grows, using variants alone for every possible combination can make the design file bloated and harder to manage. With component properties, you can define which parts of a component can change. And instead of creating separate variants for buttons with and without an icon and with and without text, you can use component properties on a single variant to toggle them on and off, thus reducing the number of components needed. This takes the guesswork out of designing for anyone using these components, and they can quickly make adjustments as Figma keeps component property controls in one place. There are currently four types of component properties, instance swap, text, boolean, and variant. In this video, we'll go through each type and how to create them, how they work with variants, and how to adopt component properties into existing design systems. If you're new to components and variants, check out our Help Center and previous tutorials on these topics. To follow along, check out the Component Properties Playground file linked in the description below. Let's explore how component properties work using a simple button component. We want to create different versions of this button. A button with both icon and text, an icon-only button, and a text-only button. When using this component, we also want to be able to swap the icon for a different one, change the string of the text, hide or show the icon, and hide or show the text. To do this, we need three types of component properties, instance swap, text, and boolean. Let's select the button and turn it into a component in order to use component properties. Since we want to be able to swap the icon out for a different one, let's give it an instance swap property. This property is great for showing which child instances you can swap out. Select the icon and go to the right sidebar. Next to the instance swap menu, click the component property button. From the modal, name the property icon and set the default instance to checkmark. When you're done, click create property. Figma replaces the instance swap menu with a purple component property pill. This shows Figma has created the property and applied it to the selected layer. Now when we create an instance, we can use the component property controls in the right sidebar to swap the icon out directly from the parent component. As a note, if we didn't apply an instance swap property to the icon, you could still swap it out for a different one. However, you'd need to select the icon instance directly to make this change, as it wouldn't be available in the parent component's property controls. Next, let's add a text property to show that you can edit the button's label. Select the text layer and go to the content section of the right sidebar. Click the component property button to open the creation modal. Name the new property text and the default value button, then click create property. Notice how the button's text changed to match the default value we set. When we go to edit our instance, we can update the text directly from the right sidebar. Next, we want the option to either show or hide the button's icon. We can do this by adding a Boolean property. Booleans refer to data as having two possible values like true and false or yes and no. You can think of a Boolean as a light switch with two possible modes on or off. In Figma, a Boolean property uses the values true or false. When we apply this property to the icon's layer visibility, a true value shows the icon while a false value hides it. Let's try this out. Select the icon and click the component property button in the layer section of the right sidebar. We'll name the property has icon and set the default value to true so that the icon is visible. 
We also want the ability to hide and show the text, so let's create a Boolean property for the text layer. We'll name it has text and set the default value to true. Tip! If you ever need to edit component properties after they're created, select the component or component set and use the right sidebar to update their names, reorder default values, and more. Now with our component properties defined, let's select the instance and check out the right sidebar. You'll find all the controls for the component properties we created in one place. When we use these components, we can stick to the list of controls and not worry about changing other properties. We can create a variety of buttons by swapping out icons, updating the text, and hiding layers without having to select a child layer. Let's move on to variant properties, which are specific to variants. Variants are individual components that live inside a component set and carry specific attributes like size, layout changes, or state changes that are defined by variant properties. Variants are great when you need specific component variations or when you need to create interactive components. If you've used variants before Figma launched component properties, variant properties are the same as the properties you'd define when creating variants. To learn more about interactive components and variants, check out the resources in the description below. To show how variant properties work, let's use a message component. This component appears in a user's inbox and contains a preview of the message, varying information about the sender, and an unread indicator. It already has the Boolean and text properties we need, but we want to create a new state that shows when a sender is actively typing a message. Let's select the component and click Add Variant in the toolbar. This duplicates the component, including its properties, and places both components into a component set. From the right sidebar, you'll see that adding a variant also created a variant property with the name and value. Let's update the variant property by changing the name to state and the value to typing. When we added a new variant, Figma also applied our new variant property state to the original component. Select the original component and you'll see the value default next to state. Let's rename the value message. Tip! If you want to add more variants to an existing component set, click Add Variant from the toolbar or click the plus icon below the component set. Now let's edit our new typing variant by changing the message preview to a blue typing label. Select the message preview layer and go to the content section of the right sidebar. You'll see a purple pill for the text property. We want to change the text, but if we try to update it on canvas, it'll update the text on the other variant. Instead, hover over the purple pill and click the detach property icon to unlink the property from the text layer. Now we can update the text without it affecting the other variant. Update the fill to a blue color and our new variant will be all set. We won't add a text property to this layer. That way, anyone using this component will know that they shouldn't make any changes to it. Now we can create a few instances, choose a state for each instance, and adjust other component properties for a messaging app. Next, we have a card for our e-commerce site that displays a product's information in either a horizontal or vertical layout. We can use variants to represent each of these layouts, so we created a variant property called Layout with values horizontal and vertical. With these variants and a combination of component properties, we can easily create a variety of cards. To get a deeper look and try these components out, Click the link to the playground file in the description below. So far, we've covered the basics of component properties, their types, how to create them, and how to apply them. But what if you have a design system that's already in use? Let's take a look at an example of how to adopt component properties into an existing component set. We have a button component set with 48 variants and no component properties. It contains four icon types, left, 
right, no icon, an icon only, three states, idle, hover, and active, and four types, neutral, positive, destructive, and disabled. This component set also has prototyping connections between variants, known as interactive components, that we want to preserve. Let's duplicate the component set so we can modify and publish the new one without disrupting teammates who are using instances of the original. Now let's figure out what needs to change. Our design system sets standards on what our buttons should look like and which aspects are customizable. We need to keep the variant properties, states, and types because our design system has defined their values and noted that they must not be changed. For example, the positive button type should always be this specific green color, and hover states should always have this particular shadow. Icon type, however, contains icons and text layers that are customizable. We can show and hide icons, swap them out, change text strings, and so on. Similar to our earlier button example, we need to set up a combination of instance swap, boolean, and text properties. To do this, let's choose one button format to work from. Icon left, icon right, icon only, or text only. We'll use the left icon buttons for this video, but you can achieve the same result with any other button format. We'll leave the left icon buttons in the component set and move the rest off to the side for reference. If at any point we realize we need to add a variant back into the component set, we can click and drag them back in. This workflow can be particularly useful when adopting component properties into large component sets. Now let's set up some component properties to account for the button's left icons. We'll use an instant swap property to swap the left icon for something else, and a Boolean property to show or hide the icon. Select the icon and click the target button just below it to select similar layers. This selects layers from other variants in the component set based on matching hierarchy and layer names. To match, our icons must have the name icon forward slash checkmark and be direct children of their respective variants. Now let's create an instant swap property, set the name to icon left, and keep the checkmark instance as the default value. Click Create Property, and the new property will apply to every selected icon. Keep those icons selected so we can add a Boolean property to them. We'll name it Has Left Icon, and set the default value to True to keep the icons visible by default. Next, let's account for the right icon buttons. We'll need the same property types as the left icon buttons. Keep the icon selected and duplicate the icon. Since the icon is in an auto layout frame, we can use arrow keys to reorder objects in the frame. Press the right arrow key to move it to the other side of the text. In the right sidebar, you'll see that both the instance swap and Boolean properties from the left icon carried over to the right icon because it was duplicated. However, we need to toggle these icons independently. To solve this, let's give the right icons their own properties. Click on the existing instance swap property to open a drop down menu and click Create Property. We'll name this Icon Right and keep the default value to checkmark. Lastly, click the existing Boolean property and do the same. This time, we'll set the default value to false. To hide the icon. Because we set up Boolean properties for both left and right icons, our text-only buttons and icon-only buttons are almost accounted for. We'll need a text property so the text string is changeable and a Boolean property to toggle the text layer visibility on and off. Instead of creating component properties from the text layer, let's create them from the component set. This flow is useful if you need to apply existing properties to a new layer or object. 
Select the component set and click the plus icon in the properties panel of the right sidebar. The drop-down menu shows component properties you can create. Select text to create a text property, keep the property name as text, and type button for the default value. Next, create a Boolean property by going back to the drop-down and selecting Boolean. We'll name this has text and set the default value to true. Once we've created the properties we need, we can apply them to the text layers. Let's select the text layers in the component set. For the Boolean property, go to the layer section and click the component property button. Since there's a Boolean property available on this component set, a drop-down menu appears instead of taking us straight to the creation modal. From this menu, we can either select an existing property or create a new one. Let's select has text to apply the Boolean property we just created. Now go to the contents section and click the component property button. Select text to apply the text property we previously created. Now that our component properties are set up, we can delete any properties carried over from the original component set that we no longer need. In this case, icon types are fully accounted for through the component properties we created, so we can select it and delete it. We were also able to account for all button formats within the 12 left icon buttons, including their prototyping flows. Because of this, we can select the variants outside the component set and delete them. We went from 48 variants to 12 variants, reducing the number needed by 75%. Not only is this component set now smaller and easier to manage, but the file's memory usage will be reduced when we're ready to remove the original component set. This is particularly useful if you have a huge design system with thousands of components. Now when we create an instance of our updated component set, we can use component properties to make every variant from the original component set. Also, when using them in a prototyping flow, their interactions work just as expected. The buttons go seamlessly from their idle, to hover, to active states, back to idle. Let's publish the library so other teammates can use the new buttons in any new designs. For best practices on how to incorporate these new components into existing designs, check out the resources linked below. This is just the beginning of component properties as it will continue to grow in the future. So be sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest product and community news. For additional resources on component properties, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.